Energy prices right now, 73.39 on WTI. This comes after oil rallied more than 4% last week on news that Russia and Saudi Arabia, the world's largest oil exporters, will cut production in August. For more, let's bring in Jeff Curry, global head of commodities research at Goldman Sachs. We just saw you about a week and a half ago, I think, Jeff. Um, and, and at that point, you, you, would, you were explaining some, I guess, softness in, in crude based on uh, on supply, but the long-term bull case is, is more than intact, you told us at the time. Are we seeing the beginnings of that, or this is, this is not, uh, we're not quite there yet? No, we're, we're seeing it across all commodities. You know, um, you know, copper is back towards 8,500, natural gas busted 270, oils above, you know, $78 a barrel this morning. So um, what we've been waiting for for six months is finally beginning to play out. Um, inventories and oil are drawing. Chinese demand is back to 15.9 million barrels per day. Time spreads are tightening, all indications of a bull structure. The problem is investors are entirely absent. Investor length is running around 5% of max right now. In other words, this is an unloved rally that is not part of um, you know, investors' portfolios right now. It's being driven by what's happening in the physical space. And I, and I think it's just, you know, it's just you know, the demoralization of false starts over the course of this entire year. This is not you know, the, the, the first time we've seen a run at this. You know, you go back to April, we took a run at 88, and then it collapsed back down. You know, our base case is that this current rally moves up into the mid-80s. You know, our end-of-year target's $86 a barrel. Um, we think it can move into the low 90s um, next year. But I think part of the reason why people are unwilling to embrace it is they go, hey, there's a lot of uncertainty around the supply. It's being driven by you know, Russia, Iran, and um, 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 Venezuelan increases really the easy come, easy go. Um, and I think there's not a lot of faith in what's going on in China right now. Um, the other aspect I think that investors are grappling with is what we like to call the two-speed economy. Services is doing well, but manufacturing is weak. And oil is more exposed to services, but it also has the exposure to petrochemicals and manufacturing, which creates a big question mark. And I think that's why investors have been slow to embrace it. But we think you're going to continue to see the draws. To give you some numbers, high-frequency data, first week of July, put draws globally at 900,000 barrels per day. We think they're going to accelerate to 1.8 million barrels per day um, during the third quarter. And that's what's going to push you up into, into the mid-80s. And I think a big question mark of how high we go is how do investors embrace this? Earlier on, uh, on Worldwide Exchange, I saw Frank uh, talking about, you know, I was listening, but I, I'm not sure exactly whether he was talking about uh, the U.N. Secretary General or the IEA, but talking about oil demand and where we're going to be uh, in the future and energy demand. And it, I, the, I think the individual was saying we need $12 trillion of investment in fossil fuels to satisfy the, do you know which which numbers I'm talking about, Jeff? Can yeah, you? I mean, you could come up with. But by the way, and it, I, I don't like to split between the the fossil fuels and the green. We need a lot of money. You know, it's close to 20 trillion, whether it's the green and the brown. But we're not seeing it. Even green has fallen to the wayside recently because higher interest rates make a lot of those green investments unprofitable. So we're lacking investment across the space. And I don't care if it's um, brown or green, um, you know, that's the core of the long-term story or copper production that's critical to, um, you know, the green capex. We're missing that investment across the entire commodity complex. And that's really core to um, this super cycle thesis. Um, one last point on supply, I think it's really important to keep in mind. And it, the IEA people have made this point is, you know, we're looking at Urals approaching the price cap. And this is one thing I've been harping on for about a year now. These price caps are not, they don't make economic sense. Once you hit them and you go above it, you start to lose supply. It creates a backward bending supply curve, meaning the higher the price goes, the less supply you have, but which begets higher prices. So we got to be careful as, as we begin to hit that. Um, and because when you look out beyond that, um, you know, the supply situation on a forward basis starts to become relatively scarce. And the other thing, too, that we're seeing in Asia is that, you know, the OPEC plus production cuts, they're beginning to bite. You see it in the pricing. Um, so, you know, we're starting to see the supply side have an impact on prices. Obviously, it's an all in. We need an all in energy policy. 
By the way, and I want to say it's not just energy; it's like copper. For you know, the, okay. the copper but, story. But just is returning to that. But just returning to that because the numbers aren't adding up for what what we're being told to do and what we're going to need to do. We we all enjoy this global economy that we have right now, and, and we all take it for granted the way these, you know, goods are traveling at you know basically at, at the speed of light to, to wherever they need to be. Uh, globally, and people have heat, and, and the, the rest of the world wants to come up to the standard of living of, of developed countries. So how much barrels per day are we going to need in 2030, and what are we using today? I, I, that was what was in this earlier. It was, it was a lot more, uh, it was a huge increase in barrels per day between now and, let's say, 2035. Do you know the numbers? Yeah, we're, we're running right now, so let's call it, you know, 101.5 million barrels per day. So where's it going? Um, if you're going to at least exceed 105. Some people put it as high as 110 before you peak out in early 2030. Um, it means you need a lot more supply. I think the one key point here is the economics out there do not discourage um, the consumption of hydrocarbons. They, they try to stimulate green consumption through carrots, but there's no sticks to be able to slow down the consumption of the hydrocarbons, which means there's a lot of risk of this exceeding 105 million barrels per day. 